Um, I'm Grace, and these are my colleagues, Enchi, Tim, and Brandon. And we'd like to welcome you to today's exploration of Ludwig van Beethoven's first set of string quartets, the six quartets of Opus 18. These masterpieces were published in 1801 and dedicated to Prince Joseph Franz Lobkowitz. They were written at the very end of Beethoven's early period, between 1798 and 1800. And so they're a demonstration of Beethoven's complete command of the classical string quartet as developed by his predecessors, Haydn and Mozart. We've read and researched a lot, and we're really looking forward to sharing what we've learned and this wonderful music with you. As you can see in your programs, today we will be presenting Beethoven's Opus 18 quartets in their published order. But in fact, Beethoven composed them in a completely different order. What we know as the third quartet in D major was actually composed first, and the quartet that we will be playing was composed second. One of our favorite moments of this piece is the very dark and tragic slow movement. Beethoven's friend, the violinist Carl Amenda, was, said, was thought to have said when he heard this movement that it reminded him of the parting of two lovers. And then Beethoven replied that he was exactly right. He got the inspiration from Romeo and Juliet's uh, tomb scene. And Beethoven went so far as to mark in his sketches um, where Romeo enters Juliet's tomb, um, Romeo's despair, and finally his last breaths. And so now we'd like to play an excerpt for you from the second movement of uh, what we think of as uh, Romeo's last breaths. Hi, so now I'm going to share with you a little bit about um, Beethoven's personal life. Beethoven loved nature, and nature was a very important um, inspiration in his life. Um, actually, he would went um, for long walks in the forest uh, almost every day, especially after he moved to Vienna in his last 20 years of his life. Um, his friends described him being extra, like, as extremely um, excited about you know when he was in the forest and he actually say and write in his notebook himself that he was um, he felt like he was able to communicate with the with the rocks the trees he would talk to them and then they would in response uh, talk back to him and and then uh, he actually was known for attempting to um, imitate lots of sounds from rivers and birds, and later on he would use it in uh, lots of his famous work. For instance, um, uh, the n famous work that related to nature, like number six symphony, the pastoral symphony, and number five violin sonata, the spring sonata, and both of them are in um, the key of F major. Uh, back to the quartet. This quartet, it's, uh, except the second movement that Brendan just talked about, the rest of the quartet is going to be in F major. Though there's no direct connection between this quartet and uh, the nature, but I think you can still find lots of lively spirit in this music. String quartets hold uh, an important place in the musical scenery of the 18th century. Back then, string quartets were not performed in official concerts as often as today. Musicians and intellectuals of the time would get together in order to exchange their ideas and play music for each other and show their art to each other. In such musical occasions, um, young Beethoven, a composer who so eagerly and uh, so eagerly wanted to impress and revolt against the common practices of music, first presented his Opus 18 quartets. As you will hear today, these quartets keep the traditions of, the, of Beethoven's great master, great teacher and predecessor, Joseph Haydn, but they also give us a hint at his own, Beethoven's own, 
creative uh, maturity, mature creativity in, in the next years of his life.
Thank you. 